Welcome everyone. This is my YouTube channel and I'm Zafi Davy. and with me today is Nila and Nila has been a dear friend of mine as we you saw in other videos but exciting part is that she just came back from uh, south of France connected to Mary Magdalene. So we have a lot to talk about that this week because it's Mary Magdalene's name day on the 22nd of July which is this Friday. So Nila, welcome. Thank you for being back on with me and talking about this powerful feminine energy that is really ready to wake up in a, the strongest way possible. That's how I feel. And as I'm telling you this, I'm getting chills <laughs> because I think that the wake up is, is here. What, what, what do you think about your travels and what did you find when you were just what, almost a few days ago, you just came back from the south of France. Can you just tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you so much, Zafi. Uh, and you had a lot to do with the magical uh, <laughs> meeting with the, your two friends and now my dear friends, Kai and Sus. Mm -hmm. So um, where do I begin? <laughs> I, think this, <laughs> I think this trip has... Uh, kind of change things in radical ways in the way in the sense that I have taken a lot of crazy trips around the world but the places we were led to the experiences I had of this profoundly powerful feminine energy <clears throat> uh, I went there looking for Mary Magdalene uh, because of the legends I wanted to attend the ceremony in um, Saints Marie's uh, de la Mer. So we went uh, around that time. Um, and from beginning to end, I felt that powerful presence guiding. And I didn't realize that how powerful the portal is. Uh, you say, right, that Magdalene, besides the figure that I'm researching and writing about Mary Magdalene's role in uh, mystical Christianity and all of Christianity because she was totally thrown out, right? And even now, uh, the kind of given, a, you know, kind of lip service or managed, <laughs> uh, not exactly in her full power. Uh, so she's an embodiment of that power. Uh, so as a Kali lover, <laughs> I like to call, entering into this mystery has been so thrilling. So um, we went to the churches, I saw the skull, I went to St. Baum, uh, and this profound sense of gratitude. When I was in that cave, it was a profound silence. That cave, there was a sense of something vibrant and yet silent. If I tried to put things into words <clears throat> and then <laughs> actually these priests came over we didn't realize they were saying something in French and we didn't realize we just sat there some people left we didn't and then of course the ceremony began and the the sound of French and then you know the entire Eucharist that these uh, men were leading were also felt very comfortable I know the complex history I know but at the same time, I felt there was, a, there was an acceptance. There was a deep sense of acceptance by this energy of whoever walks into that uh, space. Um, so that was my feeling there. Of course, climbing was not a big climb. You know, we climbed, but we were, <laughs> when we reached, when we had reached Marseille, actually, we had lost our luggage, you know, flight problems. It was like very messy crazy um, but the, the strangest thing was that when we reached Marseille very late at night after you know we couldn't get the car and everything and this uh, bread and bed and breakfast that Rajan had my husband had uh, you know rented he was you know communicating with her but he didn't know it was a her <laughs> his name was Andrea so but it, it was very late at night and then this woman opens the door, old woman opens the door uh, and she was still awake. I mean, we were very apologetic because we reached so late. And next morning when I'm talking to her, she tells me she's a devotee of Mary Magdalene. 
<laughs> so these amazing synchronicities that happen. So that was just the beginning, uh, Zephy. Um, so, uh, well, I can go on, but if you have any questions. <laughs> or yeah, you it, but, you know, it's, it's very interesting because I also felt the silence, but also the vibrant energy when I have gone to the cave and not just in the cave, in any place that I, she's, you know, she said to, the legend says that they, they right. would have traveled to like Le, Le Chateau and Le Ban and all those places right. you went, you went to more places than I have, but, right. but we all feel that energy of hers. Um, right. I think right. it's not just in those places. This is what I'm feeling. The vib her vibration is right. actually reawakening and it's becoming stronger all over the world like you know right. there's a big movement on mary magdalene but not yes. just the mary magdalene energy i think it's the feminine the feminine is really right. getting reawakened and she represents us you know she's right. a big representation right. of us so right. so would tell me one of you like wildest experiences just one of them because i know you have <laughs> many on that trip but i just want one yes uh well so besides the traditional places, so many churches, I mean, we took a massive pilgrimage, right? All the way, I mean, besides the various Black Madonna, there were so many Black Madonnas that I saw, you know, from Rock Madhu to, of course, you know, very famous Montserrat, but even small churches, I suddenly discovered the Black Madonna because my last book was my discovery of the Black Madonna. Exactly. Uh, and all the way to Compostela, we ended up taking the, you know, uh, pilgrims route all the way to Compostela. The so, Camino, the Camino, um, yeah, the Camino, right, right. Uh, but actually, uh, one of the caves, we also went to the, besides the sacred spaces, this is, I realized in this energy, there's no separation between sacred and profane. You feel her everywhere. But a couple of things, maybe I should just, how thrilling it was. Uh, one was going up the mountain, and one was going deep into a cave. <laughs> so I realized the journey was going up and going down. I know in the, you know, it's basically that's the journey, you know, you have to continuously go up and down. So the depths of the caves, depths of the mother, and then the heights of our beast. So uh, let me talk about the height first. Uh, <laughs> we were going uh, actually to Andorra. So going through the Pyrenees, the absolutely breathtaking beauty of the mountains. But we're going up and I'm looking at it, it was every, you know, really, suddenly a mist comes up, you know, very beautiful mist. And then hailstorm, hailstorm, literally powerful hailstorm. So think about it. We do not even know where exactly we were. We are in the, and it was just magnificent, fierce hailstorm. And then suddenly, it stopped and the sun came out. And my husband said, you know, there is, must be a, he stopped and I looked up and there was this double, triple, massive rainbow. Wow. And I felt the power of the goddess of the mountains because Montserrat, I mean, there was Andorra very close to Barcelona and the, you know, serrated mountains, that's what she's called. And I had this feeling that this was a kind of beautiful natural emanation of that energy between the fierceness and the beauty right and the mountains and the, I can't again even trying to express that was incredible so that's just this natural expression of this energy yes. right fierce yeah. and beautiful and of course it, it has this um uh what can we call it is this creativity right it comes mm -hmm. out of this creative energy of beauty so that was going up the height right now going deep into the depths so we went we ended up going to a lot of caves i mean uh, the famous of course lasco altamira in uh, these are now uh, you know replicas you cannot go in inside them but sus had told us in her early i we hadn't met her them yet that there is a cave called Neo and uh, where you can still go. And we, I had never heard of this cave. <laughs> so when we were traveling back and I just see the sign as I you know, tell, you know, Rajan, you know, this is the cave. So because we were already seeing so many things, we, were, we, we weren't planning. We were also being led to all sorts of stuff without 
too much planning. So then we went there and that was unbelievable, Zephi. Oh. So because these caves come from the period they call Magdalenian period, you know, like 15,000 years ago. So when we go inside the cave with little, uh, you know, flashlights, and this woman who was leading us, and we got lucky, you know, she was, even though it was supposed to be a French trip, but, you know, there were a lot of English speaking people, so she spoke in English. She took us inside this deepest, darkest cave. And wow. then, yeah, and it was so beautiful. I mean, we could only see a little bit because, you know, we only had to carry this, you know, flashlights. And then for a second, when we reached the deepest part of the cave, for a second, we, we all had to, you know, extinguish our um, flashlights. So for a second, it was pitch dark. And then she, you know, used her light on the uh, walls, cave walls. And you see these paintings made by our prehistoric, prehistoric ancestors. And then because she was the whole time she was talking, using the word Magdalene, right? Because these period of people are called Magdalenian people. There's the Magdalene because that whole area is called Magdalene. Madeleine in, in French Madeleine. Yeah. I had this sensation, you know, being in the presence of an extremely ancient power, energy, creative, intelligent, thrillingly joyful. And she made, and then because she wanted us to get, uh, feel the echo or sound in the cave. And she made the sound which sounded like Om to me. <laughs> it was very much like that. So it was this in the depth of the, you know, uh, whole thing. Um, and because of the cave experiences, because we also ended up inside a cave, <clears throat> which was a very deep cave that had collapsed and a subterranean river, we had to go you know, so deep in, into the earth, literally the core of the earth. And then we took a boat. <laughs> it was a boat. And I think since you are Greek, I was just thinking of it was like, you know, some other word was lithi, like you're taking this boat into some other realm. Yeah, like we have the, the ancient Greek story here. Yes. Right, right. So we go. So anyway, yeah. yeah. So the, these are some of the things. And again, but we were almost out there for five weeks. So, you know. <laughs> well, that's amazing because, you know, you do have, we do, it's kind of like humanity. You know, you have, you leave and you go to the higher realm and yeah. you come back through the deepest, yeah. you know, the right. deepest womb. So right. it's right. kind of interesting what humanity is going through right now. It's right. actually rising and rising and rising right. with our help. But then we're going to, you know, come back down again when we're ready. Right. Right. But right. Right. I, what do you think about this week also being her her name day, as we say in Greece, because we, you know, we celebrate her here in Greece also. Right. And right. Um, like I said, in, in previous stuff, I we do have a very similar story as the South of France, mm -hmm. um, which is in one island here that I will mm -hmm. disclose that when my book is ready. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not disclosing the island yet, but, yeah. but isn't it amazing that, that both, I mean, a lot of worlds, um, mm -hmm. no, I shouldn't say worlds, a lot of traditions have this Mary Magdalene and it's so much connected to the Kali aspect of right. her also. Right, right. And, mm -hmm. and that red energy that she has, you know, it's really much connected to her. Right. So I feel that for me this week, and I don't know, what do you think? It's, it's, it's good to tell our our you know the audience to actually wear red and honor it that way because red it was not it was a color like we both ended up wearing red today we didn't, we didn't even know it no i i didn't plan it it was just i just it was just intuitive <laughs> so what i'm saying is this combination of like wearing that red depth first chakra color and actually be able to kind of open up that chakra so we can born through this amazing creativity that you're talking about so you can give you can give new birth to this to this era that's happening because you know the old is finishing the hiding of her uh, you know the, the the woman feeling shameful or feeling all those different aspects of that we have gone through it's right. it's done it's it's over for me i that's where yes. i'm feeling what are you feeling about that 
Absolutely. It's high time that this hiding, this secrecy ends because so much of our trauma, uh, violence, conflict, personal, uh, you know, interpersonal, collective, actually they come from our misreading, misuse, and total shameful um, desacralization of our sexual energy. Exactly. And especially women's bodies. Everywhere we go, it is this desacralization. The most sacred, of course, I come from the Kali tradition, so I never experienced that. I was never told that there is something wrong with the body. Maybe I was just lucky. I know my father was a Kali devotee, and uh, we were two sisters, we deeply loved. So I didn't really, I was never told, having grown up in India, even though a lot of people in India too uh, experience mm -hmm. that. But without honoring and really truly honoring, see that what happens, people either create this extreme negativity and therefore control, you know, control and kind of a fake celibacy mm -hmm. <laughs> that the religious, uh, patriarchal religions create, which of course we know how terrible that, you know, when the reality shows up, you cannot suppress energy. Because it's a it's the most powerful energy. We are born out of it, unless you know you are immaculate conception, Jesus, but or such great people, and that's a mystery that we do not know. Or so what happens? What has happened? Uh, what I have seen in the United States, going to the other extreme, we're treating you know, oh well, there is nothing sacred, so do whatever you feel like. Uh, so, so patriarchal religions try to suppress it. The when you completely dump religion because it's oppressive. Then you say, okay, you know, we are sexually liberated. We can sleep around, do whatever we feel like. But that does not make us happy either because we cannot misuse the sacred energy. We need to understand it without suppress. And this is what Tantra does. And you know, you are a Kamakya Yogini <clears throat> that uh, this is neither suppression nor, you know, mindless, unconscious uh, kind of indulgence. So, so I think first of all we need to those of us who have the good fortune of having learned this tremendous mystery which is also very simple we've also there is an innocent aspect there is a deeply innocent aspect to this energy mm -hmm. uh, so to to uh, kind of learn to honor it and magdalene represents that magdalene has that and that was the main reason why you know, for even though she is now called the apostle to the apostles, but her role is so much more. And that's what I think I'm discovering uh, as I'm proceeding in this, uh, trying to understand this gnosis. Uh, my, my Gnostic teacher calls it wild gnosis, who, she, my, uh, who sadly passed away last December. But what I have learned is this absolutely beautiful creative energy. Uh, intense, and of course, if we do not understand it and do not learn to go beyond the impulsive aspects of the unconscious aspect, then of course we create trouble for ourselves. But I think um, time is ripe, it's a very good time. This is why all of us, whether we wanted it or not, sometimes I say, I don't even know how I ended up <laughs> doing this. <laughs> you really an English professor thinking I'm doing and now here I am writing about, you know, Mary Magdalene and the Black Madonnas, all of them combine the light and the dark. There is this deep understanding. Uh, I call her the mother principle, the, the black womb of the great mother from which the male and the female emerge. So, so this dance, we cannot create a loving, a regenerative society where men and women are actually equal, where they work together in conjunction, in harmony with nature, because this is what we have done, right? Mother nature is also devalued. So I think uh, you're absolutely right. Um, this is a most important time for us where we learn to respect, acknowledge all aspects of the you know, great divine feminine.
exactly. And and the time has come, I think, the reawaken or the awaken or the shake up, because this is what I'm feeling. Also this week, we're going to have like a little shake up energetically, very strongly, mm-hmm. not just because it's her name day, but everything that's going on all around us. We see right. it every day out there for, right. you know, so she's helping in that sense of like feeling safe and feeling secure. But at the same right. time, she's shaking us up and say, wake up, wake up, yeah. smell the coffee, <laughs> you know, in a right. Sense. <laughs> and, right. and you know really honor your body it doesn't matter if you're male or female because the magdalene is not just about a female body or a male right. body right right, she's right. Et, you know she's the great mother so right. it's just honoring that and i think this week uh we're gonna see that we're gonna really see this shake up happening and um to the end of the month but you know i will i'll talk about that you know next week but yeah, I feel like we should prepare ourselves for this awaken, you know, mm-hmm. it's been happening slowly. And a lot of us are woken up because we've been doing the work for a, for a long time. But I think a lot of masses of people are going to waken up now. That's what I feel in this energy. And oh. she's protecting it. So yes. Yes. That's, that's my feeling. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, waking, uh, waking does not happen without some shaking, right? Exactly. Because we, uh, we're all deeply asleep, you know, it's like, uh, it's almost like a, almost like a coma. <laughs> yeah. So, so waking up to the sacred nature of the body, because so many spiritual traditions are almost disembodied about some mind and some, you know, abstract stuff. She's that too. I mean, she's also, you totality of our being but so often the body has been cut off right Uh, so this waking uh, waking up is really waking up to our total body uh, and learn to respect and honor uh, our entire being yeah so i i kind of think we should tell the audience that that need to watch this week how's their body uh, you know behaving what parts of their body is having energy, what parts of their body doesn't have energy, because that's where the reawakening will happen in our bodies, as you say. Right. So right. I think that is a good, um, that is a good time for us to leave our audience now, because I think we, <laughs> we said a lot and we'll come back, <laughs> we'll come back yes. on another, another week and say more, but okay. um, thank you so much, Nila. I really appreciate that you wanted to share this with me and with my, the group, um, the watches, because it's so important to bring the knowledge and to, you know, like, like we said, what are we going to talk about? But it just happened to be, look, I mean, on her, on her week, correct? Yeah, um, right. On her celebration right. and this whole thing flows. So also that's where we need to trust, correct? We need right. to trust that everything happens on the right time. Exactly, exactly. So, on yeah. that note, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Well, for- thank you. Thank you for giving me the space to talk a little bit about the crazy journey. And thanks to you, I met you know, Susan Kai, and hope to maybe have a conversation together. And maybe okay, Zephy. one of those days we'll take a group together and go there and have fun. <laughs> that with will everybody. be fantastic. <laughs> have fantastic. a great evening. So, okay. namaste. All right. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much.